Well, hello. If you're new around here, I am Maddie. And pretty much on this channel, I'm just making my dream wardrobe and sharing the steps of what works for me in case you guys want to follow along in making your own DIY pieces as well. I've forever been obsessed with this kind of retro style jumper where it has the mid seam and then that center top zip, which goes up to a high neck. As you can tell, I've made it out of towels once again. If you had have watched my previous toweling video, you'd know that toweling frays a lot. So I use bias binding to finish all the inner seams as well as the outer edges. And I think aesthetically it comes across cool and also functionally it just helps keep it nice and clean. You do end up needing more than one towel to make these so I used that to my benefit and did a bit of like a patchwork finish. I think both of these ended up being thrifted and honestly so happy with how it turned out. Hopefully I do get a chance to wear it quite a bit over the coming months because I think it's meant to be quite a drizzly summer. Well anyway if you want to add something similar to your wardrobe this is what you'll need to make it. Before we jump into making this toweling jumper I just want to say a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video which is Karma. Now Karma is a free app and chrome extension that ensures that you never miss out on another price drop, coupon code or restocking of a sold out item. Personally over the past couple of years I've been trying to become a bit more savvy with my money so I love using Karma to restock on items that I would be purchasing anyway. You know things like makeup, perfume, sewing tools, filming gadgets and just any other essentials. For example for this tutorial I knew that I needed a new zipper, some bias binding and a new machine needle. So prior to all the recent sales I went on Karma, saved these items and then I was notified when the price dropped and I bought them. And then also from a conscious consuming point of view I feel like the time between saving an item and then purchasing it has also helped me reduce impulse buying because I have to think about it more. But here's how easy it is. I went to Karma's website, created an account, and then used their prompt to add the Chrome extension button to my browser. This was such a quick process and now when I shop I can use the Karma icon to save items and be notified if the price drops or a sold out item restocks. I even categorized my saves so as the list begins to grow it's easier to locate these items. Also when you're checking out on a desktop, Karma scans the web and lets you know if there are any coupons worth trying. And if that's not enough, you can get cash back from select retailers for you and also for a good cause with Karma Gives. It's free, it's easy, it saves you time and money. What more could you want? You can download the Karma Shopping Assistant through the link in the description box of this video. Thanks again to Karma and now let's jump into this tutorial. I'll put the suggested amount of fabric you'll need in the description box of this video. Say if you do want to get fabric that is available off a roll or if you are making it from a towel, anything smaller than a medium, two towels will be perfect. And for anything larger than a medium, I would probably suggest about three towels, which means you can have more fun with like the varying patches of colors that you play around with. For the type of material, you could obviously go for toweling or you could even go for like a fleece, a denim, even like a padded finish. There's so many different ways you can finish this. Don't think you just have to use toweling. I think these are both thrifted. I thrifted this beautiful kind of like dusty pink checkered finish towel and then this kind of like sage just like plush towel. They're nothing special, they're just normal towels so they are quite thick so I will warn you to take it easy on the thick parts. You also need some bias binding, a zipper for this center section, ideally measuring yourself how long you want this zipper to be. Mine finishes just under my bust area and if you are unsure just get a longer zip, you can always trim it shorter and maybe keep in mind like I got a color that does kind of contrast well with the binding and just the material itself so look out for something that complements the material you end up using and then we'll just need some matching thread to our material some fabric scissors, fabric chalk, a measuring tape, some pins. We'll also need a reference shirt which we are going to use as a base template and kind of trace around it. Ideally go for a shirt that is fitting the way that you would like the sweater or the jumper to fit. For me I want mine to be quite oversized so I made sure that I was working with a large shirt. And then just our trusty old sewing machine. Just for a reference so you know what panels we will end up cutting out. So we've got the two top front panels, the bottom front panel, the back section which could be divided into two panels or it could just be the one same material and and then the two sleeves and the high collar section. Measure out how long your zipper is or at least how long you would like your zipper section to be and then keep this measurement in mind and we'll lay down the shirt so we are focusing on one half of the front panel and we just do this by folding it in half and just tucking away the sleeves so we are just focusing on the bodice section. Then from the top shoulder area we'll measure down that length that we found for the zipper. If you want this to be one block color then just trim out a piece at this full height and then add half an inch seam allowance to all the edges. Otherwise if you want the patchwork finish like mine then figure out how much you want of each fabric to fill up this full height. Then measure down to the point of the first top panel then continue tracing around this section making sure again to add half an inch seam allowance to all edges and then cut out what will be the top half with this first material. Also just keep in mind if you are using a shirt that has a bit of a loose neck maybe you just trace around the top back neck area so it is a higher fit because it's better to cut it out as a higher fit and then be able to cut away from there rather than cutting out too loose of a neck and then having to kind of adapt and make up for the space later. You can then use this first piece as a template to cut out the second piece. Just make sure when you are trimming around it that you have the good sides facing. 
Now, if you're doing the patchwork style like me, we need to cut out the second half of these front panels. My top panels didn't extend to the point where the bottom of the sleeve curves out. So I need to allow for extra width for this curved area. Now, if you're unsure, you can add about two to three inches. Otherwise you can lay down your reference shirt and figure out how much more you need to add to allow for the bottom of the sleeve hole curve. And then for the height, it would just be a calculation of figuring how much you need to add onto this first piece to in total reach the height of the zipper, making sure again that you do have the necessary seam allowance. And again, I just use this first one as a template to cut out the second piece. To complete the front side, we just need to cut out what will end up being the bottom half now. Find the width of the top panels and that will be the cutting width of this bottom panel. And then to figure out the length, you can use your reference shirt or just measure on your body where you would like your sweater to finish. And if you're unsure, just add more and you can always trim it off later. And again, just keep in mind to add half an inch seam allowance to the top and bottom edges. I then plotted out the measurements on my designated towel for the bottom half where I thought the sage would look nice sitting under the pink jacket section above it. And then I essentially repeated the same process for the backside, except all pieces will be the full width. Again, I used my shirt as a reference and calculated how far I wanted this top pink section to go down to. This ended up being a couple of inches below the armhole. Once I lined the shirt to the height of this top section, I then traced around the first half with all the necessary seam allowance, trimmed this out, and folded it over to create a symmetrical full width piece. For the bottom half of the back section, I then just matched the width of the first piece and then calculated the additional height required to get this sweater to my desired length and cut it out to these dimensions. That means I've got all the front panels ready to go and all the back panels and now it's time to start assembling it. We'll focus on the back first just because that is nice and easy. So lay these panels so they are good sides facing and the edges which will create the seam where they join is all aligned. You can then pin this in place and then just sew directly across this area. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using bias binding to neaten up the inside seams and help prevent it from fraying. I did go for the thinner bias binding for these. If you're wondering I think it ends up being about 12 millimeters wide and if you want to use bias binding yourself and you're unsure of how to use it essentially we lay down the good sides of the bias binding onto the seam that we are going to be covering up and we'll unfold the crease section which is closest to this raw edge and then sew along this crease attaching it to the seam allowance section. Then once that first line is sewed in place, you then just wrap it around and then just sew a second line from the underside closing up the bias binding and encasing that raw seam. Just going to join the front panels essentially in the same manner so lay them down and make sure that the center edges are aligned and that the side edges are offset which we will end up curving for the sleeve hole later and then we'll just lay these again so they are good sides facing and aligned along this raw edge so this in place again for the front side and if you're like me and you are doing the bias binding just repeat that process of covering the raw edges of these seams with that bias binding like i mentioned before sections joined it was then time to replicate the curve of the sleeve so I just laid down the back side and literally just trimmed a curve around that edge which will then complete the sleeve section and then use that first piece as a template for the second piece and that meant my front top sections are ready to go we'll then add these front pieces onto the back pieces so again lay the front sides good sides down onto the back and align them at the top shoulder area and then we'll just sew across those lines to join the front and the back together
Next, we're going to add the extended high collar section on. So we will just measure this neckline area that we have created and add about one inch of seam allowance to that measurement that we just found. And then we're going to cut out a rectangle that is this length by the height of the collar we want to add on. Keep in mind, you will lose about half an inch of seam allowance when we do attach it onto the garment. For my collar, I ended up cutting it at about two and a half inches high. So the final collar ends up being about two inches. Now that I have that rectangle cut out and ready to go, I then just found the center back section of the neck and the center section of this new panel, aligned them so the good sides are facing and just began pinning from this center point out to each front points of the neckline. And then when I jumped on the machine, I just sewed a simple line joining the collar onto the main part of the garment. Also, just a little side note, I am only adding one piece on as the collar and no interfacing or anything because I found that the toweling itself is quite thick and when it sits on its own, it has the ability to stand up straight. Whereas if you are using maybe a material that isn't as thick, you might want to cut out two pieces, join them together and create a double layer and maybe even add some interfacing in there which will help add some stiffness to it so just keep that in mind but yeah for toweling I found no problems with just having a single layer. Again I used bias binding to clean up this seam but I did one detail different so I attached the first section as normal by laying it good sides down, unfolding that crease closest to the edge and sewing along that crease but instead of the second bit of how I normally fold it just over the seam allowance instead I folded it onto the actual garment. I think personally that just helps give the collar a bit of foundation pulling it towards the garment and helping it sit up straight and also just for comfort so the seam is not sticking out into your neck. Once I had folded that over and I was happy with the placement of that and then just jumped on the machine and sewed across this section. I think someone in my previous toweling video asked a question about what thread you should be using at this point and this will end up showing on the outer edge so if you have found that this thread particularly stands out on your toweling maybe switch it to one that blends in with your toweling. I found personally the thread kind of just gets lost in the fluffiness of the toweling and didn't stand out too much so my white thread was perfectly fine to use. So just a little side note that you can kind of play around with and figure out what works best for your project. Next up we are going to add in the zipper. So figure out which side is the good side of your zipper. This is clearly the one that you can access the handle to move the zipper. We'll lay this side good sides facing onto the material so the zip at this point is kind of sitting entirely on the garment. Also for placement you want the very top edge of where the zip stops to the very top edge of the collar because I am finishing it off with a bias bias binding. The finishing point of where this is is going to stay exactly the same. So I lined that top of the zipper to the top of the collar and then laid it good sides facing and then just sewed entirely down this section. I did recently get a zipper foot but I think I have like one that is meant to be used on top and not for this method because to get my foot as close as I could to the zipper section I had to have all my material on the right side which you'll see ends up being quite bulky and like in the machine so I think I'm going to get a different zipper foot. But also if you don't have a zipper foot that is perfectly fine. I have done this many a times with just a regular foot. It does mean that your foot might partially sit on top of the teeth of the zipper. Make sure that you obviously don't sew over the zipper section because that could potentially bend or break your needle. Now this next step is optional but I pretty much did the same method where I used the bias binding to attach it to the seam allowance that I have just created by laying it good sides down facing, unfolding that creased edge and aligning that edge and sewing along that crease and then instead of doing the second step where I wrap it entirely around this raw edge and instead just kind of leave it free flowing to act as a bit of some facing or just a barrier between me and the zipper when I wear it therefore it won't like rub up against me and be itchy. As you can see the zipper will end up sitting flat and this binding that I ended up adding pushes towards the under part of the garment where the seam allowance sits. We'll then just repeat this for the second side of the zip. Now obviously the zip is already attached to one panel so we'll essentially need to lay down the panels so that they are good sides facing and just shift it so that the edge of the zip is aligning with the new edge that we are going to attach it onto. Again, aligning the top of the zipper to the top of the neckline and then just sewing entirely down there. Just a warning, if you are doing the toweling, I did find that it became very thick at any of the seams that I was sewing over the top of. So what I did to prevent my needle from snapping is I just used my hand swivel on the side and went over these sections nice and slowly to make sure that I didn't snap any needles. <laughs> At this point, if you're like me and you are doing the bias binding and you've got it aligned to the top, you can trim off the tail sections so that it's sitting all nice and flush along that top area. Next up, we're just gonna finish the top edge of the collar. Pretty much as normal, we're going to lay down the bias binding good sides onto the material and unfold the creased sections. Because we are going to see this edge, we just need to create a simple fold towards the underside of the bias binding. I ended up going about a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter and folded that over and then pretty much pushed this as close 
close as I could to the teeth of the zipper and then just sew on that creased line as normal entirely around the collar section until we get to the other end where again we will create that folded finish. For me I just waited to the last minute to trim it so I knew the exact length that I needed. Continued sewing up to the very edge of this binding as close as I can up to the zipper and you'll see I go over the folded section which helps secure that in place. Then we essentially create the second fold as normal because we did create those folds at the end of each of the bias binding they may potentially stick out a little bit when we go to fold this over so you might want to tuck the little corners in so that they hide within the bias binding. Hopefully you seeing me do it makes sense rather than me trying to explain it. Tuck those little corners in and then fold it over as normal and then we'll start sewing at the very top of the collar down parallel with the zipper and the edge of the binding. Pop the needle in, lift the foot, turn the corner, pop the foot back down and then continue along the edge of this bias binding from the underside sewing entirely around the neck area back to the other edge get as close as you can to the zipper turn the corner and then go up parallel with the zipper and that means that you have your bias binding all nice and secure in all the areas that it needs to be if for some reason like me you struggle to just start at the top section you can actually sew towards the zipper and then up the corner rather than starting parallel to the zipper and turning the corner for some reason I found because my foot was kind of sitting on the zipper I don't know it just jammed and got weird so follow the steps as normal and hopefully your machine works normal if not you can always adapt to start somewhere else and sew towards the zipper just for that starting point and then obviously the other end ends up being normal and then that means we have like a cute little weird cropped vest thing and the top section is looking all nice and clean we're just going to continue our focus on the front side at this point and that panel that we cut out for the bottom front section we're just going to attach that onto the front side now at this point if you had a normal zipper you would have a bit of a tail section and probably no big large stopper at the bottom i had one of those zippers that had a massive stopper it's one of those jacket ones that you can like disconnect and connect i liked the aesthetic of this zipper which is why i got it but the functionality of it is not what i wanted so off screen which i didn't record because it's not very aesthetically pleasing i pretty much just got a hammer and smashed off the bottom of this zipper stopper alternatively i could use pliers screwdriver things to pop them off if you're in the same dilemma as me and you have a big bulky thing at the bottom which we ideally do not want you can just remove it yourself if that doesn't make sense there is plenty of youtube videos there were people showing you how to remove them but pretty much you want to have a little tail end of the zipper which we can use to hide in the seam that we're about to create the length of my front section was a little bit longer than my zipper so i just trimmed that off broke off that big stopper thing and then just laid down the bottom panel good sides facing onto this top section and just sewed entirely across there joining these together and creating the top and the bottom of the front panel just make sure when you are getting to the zipper section you're pretty much sewing as close as you can to the bottom of those teeth you don't want to leave any little gaps along there so it looks weird or anything so you'll see I get nice and close in there. I did cover this seam with bias binding again and then it ended up looking like this and then that meant the front section was all done. Now we're just going to continue in joining these bodice panels together, flip the front and the back panels over so they are good sides facing and sew down the two side seams from the bottom of the armhole down to the very bottom of this sweater. Super simple and once I'd done that I again used my bias binding to clean up these edges and I ended up with this epic oversized vest. Honestly I was very tempted to stop at this point because I love this oversized vest style but I ended up persisting and adding the sleeves on because a sweater was the goal and that is what we are creating. I had a limited amount of this pink toweling material left over which I had designated towards the sleeves so obviously I need two separate panels for the sleeves so I folded this in half to figure out the maximum amount that I could use keeping in mind that I wanted to have enough length to create full length sleeves but then obviously enough height to fill in the sleeve hole area on the jumper. I trimmed it into the two separate pieces and then folded the individual pieces again in half and that is what I'm going to use to create the sleeves on the fold which essentially means you're just looking at one half but cutting the two sides at the same time but as you can see when I lay the garment over the top the height of the sleeve is a little too short but a little hack here if you just tilt the armhole section on an angle you will find that the armhole section sits entirely on the sleeve and also allows for a bit of a gap underneath for seam allowance for us to join it later. Grabbed my fabric chalk and began tracing around this angle and you'll see at the bottom section I kind of curved down towards the bottom edge and that will just allow for that seam allowance that I spoke about earlier where we join the bottom of the sleeves together and then 
then just grabbed my fabric scissors and trimmed out that shape. From there, we just flipped the sleeve so it is then sitting on the garment and the good sides are facing. I matched the top shoulder of the armhole and the top shoulder of the sleeve and pinned that section in place first and then continued pinning around the armhole from the top to the underside on both front and back sides. You will notice that the sleeves and the armhole are kind of angling away from each other. So that just means at each stage of pinning, you kind of need to adapt the fabric so it is matching. Once I'd pinned entirely around this section, I then just jumped on the sewing machine, making sure to start from the underarm section, sewing entirely around this armhole and then back pretty much to the exact same point where I started. And just a little side note, I know there are many different ways to add sleeves and I don't think this is a conventional way, but it is just a way that I found that works for me. Obviously, if you prefer it in another way, that is perfectly fine to go ahead and do that. So now you'll see when the sleeve is folded out and you're looking at the good sides, it is looking like a normal sleeve but obviously we need to close up the underarm section. Flip it inside out so the material is laying good sides facing and then we'll just start right up in the corner of the underarm and sew a line towards the edge of the sleeve. Just keep in mind if you stay parallel to the edge of the sleeve it will probably end up being a bit of a wider bell sleeve finish whereas if you want it to be a bit tighter up towards the wrist or wherever your sleeve finishes I would recommend sewing on a bit of an angle up towards the top and creating a smaller end point. I sewed pretty straight in line with this bottom edge just because I personally do like that oversized sleeve look. I may not have mentioned this at every step, but before moving forward, I have been bias binding all of the inner seams before I move on to the next step. So I went back and did that to the sleeve hole and the underarm section, and then it is up to finishing the very edge of the sleeve. So at this point, you might wanna try it on and trim the edge of the sleeve down to the point where you want it to finish. Pretty much exactly where it sits now is where it is going to finish even when we add the bias binding on. Whereas if you are doing a hem, just make sure you have that extra inch seam that's to create that folded hem finish. Now again, for the bias binding, I pretty much do the same procedure where I lay the good sides of the bias binding onto the garment, unfold the side that is closest to the raw edge of the material, and then sew along that crease. But one difference is I'm just going to leave a tail end of about half an inch to an inch on each end. That means I will be able to sew that close and create a nice clean finish. So once I sew entirely around this circumference, I just make sure to stop pretty much close to where I started. And those tail ends that I left out, I just lay them so they are good sides facing and sew this so it is nice and tight to the garment. And then once I've done that, I just trim off any excess material, go back to sewing along that crease over the top of this little gap that we left. And that means we have a nice fully enclosed first line around this bias binding. And then you just repeat it as normal where you create the second fold around the edge, enclosing this area within the bias binding by sewing that final understitch. And then we are up to the final step. It is just finishing off the bottom of the garment. It is perfectly fine to leave it as a straight edge and as is, just trim it to the length that you want it to be. And then just pretty much repeat the same process for the bias binding that we did for the sleeve, where we left that little tail end and closed it up. Personally, I wanted to add a bit more of like a dynamic finish to the bottom of this sweater. To do this, I just measured up four inches on either of the side seams from the bottom and then trimmed a curved line in line with this point and down to the center. Folded this over to create a nice symmetrical finish and cut the other side at the same shape and then just went around and finished it with the bias binding that same method that we finished the sleeve with leaving that little tail end sewing along the crease stopping just before I finish and joining those two tail ends good sides facing trimming any excess off of that seam allowance sewing back along that bias to close any gaps that may have been left open and then doing that final fold over and sewing from the underside and that meant my jumper was all done and here's how she's looking in all her final glory I'm so in love well I hope you enjoyed watching this jumper come to life I'm so so happy to be adding it to my wardrobe and honestly I can't wait for it to be cooler days so I can wrap it a bit more if not even just like wearing it down to the beach because obviously it's telling. I can just throw it on afterwards if we hang out at the beach until dark time during the summer. If you did happen to follow along yourself, I would love to see how it turned out. So please tag me at The Essentials Club on Instagram. And also, if you did enjoy watching this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe as I've got plenty more videos like this in the works. Also, make sure you download the free Shopping Assistant Karma. It's a no-brainer to just have going on in the background while you are shopping and helping you save money. Well, I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are and I will see you guys in the upcoming videos. Mm -hmm.